Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. Java is a powerful programming language that's been around for a long time, but even experienced Java developers love finding way to make coding easier. That's where Lumbok comes into the picture. Lumbok is a game changer that helps you to cut down on boring and repetitive code. So in this tutorial, we'll dive into Lumbok and its annotations. Don't worry, it won't be boring. I will not only explain the annotations, but also show you how they work behind the scene. Plus, I have got some cool hidden features of Lumbok to share with you. In simple word, we are going to do a postmortem of Lumbok, and by the end of this video, you will be pro in Lumbok and its annotations. So be with me till the end to get complete idea about Lumbok. Okay? So without any further delay, let's get started. So first, let's begin with what is Lumbok, okay? So I don't want to make you boring by giving a lengthy definition, rather I just want to add a high level overview about Lumbok. Basically Lumbok is a Java library that helps reduce boilerplate code by automatically generating commonly used methods like getter and setter, constructor, equals and hash code, and two string like others through annotations. Instead of writing this repetitive code manually, Lombok uses annotation to generate this code at compile time, which helps to make our code cleaner, more readable and maintainable and also it reduces the overall development time. This is really out of the box, isn't it? Don't worry, if you don't understand this definition, that's absolutely fine. I am going to explain the things from very basic to advanced level. So what we are going to do, we will create a java class and all the regular method like getter, setter, constructor equals, has code, to string, builder, all the methods rather than we write them in each and every pojo or model class, we will ask Lombok to write it for us. Then we will see the source code of Lombok generated class, how they have used this method. Okay, That will give you the better clarity about how these things are being generated by Lombok. Don't worry, we'll go step by step. But before you want to play with Lombok, first you need to install Lombok in your ID, irrespective of ID you are using, whether it is Eclipse or IntelliJ or BS Code, you must need to add this particular plugin in your ID. Fine? So since I am using the IntelliJ idea, I can show you the steps to install Lombok in IntelliJ. But if you are an Eclipse or BS Code user, I will share the installation link in video description. Okay, So let's go to the IntelliJ idea and install the Lombok. So just click on the IntelliJ idea icon and then go to the setting. Then here you will find the section called plugins. Just click on that and go to the marketplace. Just search your Lombok. You can see here Lombok is already installed for me. So if I can go to the installed section, I can find the Lombok. But if you are doing it first time, if you are not installed it before, you will find here. So just click on that and you just need to click on install. For me, it is appear here. Okay. Now since this is already installed with me, next what I need to do, I just need to add the dependency of Lombok in my project. Okay. First step, add the plugin. Second step, go to your pom.xml and then just add this particular dependency org project lombok that is a group id artifact is lombok and this is what the latest version of lombok so you need to remember these two steps to play with the lombok fine now what is the next we understand what is lombok how to install it in your id now the next step let's understand commonly used lombok annotation and how they work under the hood. When I'm saying commonly used Lombok annotations is nothing. Getter and setter, constructor, equals and has code and two string and builder and super builder like those annotations. Okay. We'll see 
what is the purpose of this annotation and how this lombok helps me to not write those repeated code in each and every class and how he will generate these things for me okay so we will first understand the commonly used annotations then i will give you the hidden magic or uh, hidden gems of this lombo so first let's go to the idea then let me create a pojo class so if i'll go to the src main java i created a package so even i created a pojo class called employee with couple of field employee id name and department now in this employee class i have defined these three field id name and department now what i want to do i want to define getter and setter method so if i want to define that what i can do i can directly take the help of id and i can generate this getter and setter for all the field right you can see here employee class having the getter of id setter of id and all the field i mean all the three field now think i have another pojo called customer or order there also i have couple of field where i want to generate the getter and setter method so what i need to do i need to write like this okay since i have three field for this particular class i have write the 10 line method not 10 exactly 12 line method right but if your customer class have 10 field then you need to write getter and setter for each and every field which will occupy minimum 30 line of your class right so i don't want to do this repeated task defining getter and setter in each and every class what i want rather i want this to be generated by lombo so i will just remove it then how lombo will understand okay you want lombo to generate getter and setter method for your class just tell them hey lombo for this employee class please generate the getter method for me also please generate the setter method for me now getter and setter method for this each and every field will be generated by lombo if you want to validate that what i can do let me compile this particular class or i'll just generate the jar file that that is also fine right in the target we can see the compiled class now if we'll simply go to the target and if you'll just open the class and go to your project directory i mean the package directory and if you will open the employee see here lombok generated and the getter and setter method for my class for all the field is being generated here and it was annotated with other generated because it is the part of lombok lombok is generated this on behalf of us okay how lombok generated because you have defined this particular annotation fine so this is how at compile time lombok generated the required method for you if you have 10 field or 50 field it does not matter just define these two annotation you no need to write getter and setter method manually in your pojo class rather lombok will take care of it by seeing the annotation next if you see in this employee dot class what it generated getter and setter only and it generated the default constructor what if i want to generate constructor with all the argument or what if i just want to add the to string so i can add here the way i have added the getter and setter similar way i can just define constructor with all the field and then i can also define to string i can also define equals and hash code correct i can define like this fine but again if i have customer class for that also i want to do two string default constructor all argument constructor equals and has code similarly i have order class i have payment class for each and every pojo present in my application if i will start writing the default method like the regular method two string equals and has code um, this constructor getter and setter then i will end up with by designing the model or by designing the pojo only right 
आई विल नेवर प्रोग्रेस विथ राइटिंग माई बिजनेस लॉजिक सो रादर दैन टेकिंग द हेड एक ऑफ डिफाइनिंग दिस रेगुलर यूज मेथड राइटिंग बाय योर ओन व्हाट आई कैन डू आई विल आस्क लॉम्बक हे लॉम्बक कैन यू प्लीज जनरेट ऑल आर्गुमेंट कंस्ट्रक्टर फॉर मी आई विल जस्ट रिमूव दिस बिकॉज आई एम जस्ट आस्किंग लॉम्बक टू डू इट फॉर मी सो आई विल जस्ट डिफाइन लॉम्बक टू डिफाइन ऑल आर कंस्ट्रक्टर फाइन सिमिलरली हे लॉम्बक कैन यू प्लीज जेनरेट टू स्ट्रिंग फॉर मी सो आई एम रिमूविंग फ्रॉम हियर जस्ट टेल हिम हे जस्ट जेनरेट द टू स्ट्रिंग मेथड फॉर मी सो वी टेल लॉम्बक टू जेनरेट टू स्ट्रिंग फॉर अस राइट नाउ सिमिलरली इफ आई वॉन्ट लॉम्बक टू जेनरेट इक्वल्स एंड हास कोड आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू राइट इट बाय माई ओन देन जस्ट रिमूव दिस एंड जस्ट टेल टू द लॉम्बक हे कैन यू प्लीज जेनरेट इक्वल्स एंड हास कोड मेथड फॉर मी एज वेल सो इट डज नॉट मैटर वेदर यू आर ए फ्रेशर गाय और एक्सपीरियंस गाय वेन एवर यू आर डिफाइनिंग द पोजो यू मस्ट नीड दिस फील्ड टू प्ले विथ इट राइट यू नीड द गेटर एंड सेटर फॉर दैट पोजो यू नीड ऑल आर्गुमेंट कंस्ट्रक्टर डिफॉल्ट कंस्ट्रक्टर टू स्ट्रिंग मेथड इक्वल्स एंड हास्कोड मेथड एवरीथिंग यू नीड टू डिफाइन इन युअर ऑब्जेक्ट फाइन नाउ व्हाट आई हैव डन हियर रादर आई डिफाइन इट आई जस्ट आस्क लॉम्बोक टू डू इट फॉर मी नाउ लेट्स चेक वेदर लॉम्बोक इज एडेड दोज मेथड्स एट कंपाइल टाइम और नॉट वेदर वी आर एबल टू एक्सेस दोज मेथड्स और नॉट ओके सो हाउ कैन आई वैलिडेट सिंपली आई विल जस्ट generate the jar file again to check the compiled classes just open the employee dot class okay can you see here employee class these are the field it generated the getter and setter method correct that is what the first annotation i have defined to string is also added by lambo then equals and hash code method can you see here and also there is a method can equal to just check the instance of the object is instance of employee or not you got another bonus method then you have the hash code that's it right that is what only we requested lombok to generate for us where is the constructor i am looking for that yeah here is the constructor right now let's see whether we are able to access it or not just go to your java class and i will just type here employee employee equal to new employee see here i am getting the option of all argument constructor because i have annotated here employee dot java i need all argument constructor so you can able to see that new employee give the id 101 name equal to let's say basant then department dev something like that okay now let's check whether i am able to access the get run setter or not sys out employee dot get id 101 then let me check whether i can able to set the value or not employee dot set department it something like that let's see whether we are able to get the result of two string or not sys out i just want to print the employee and equals and hash code you can just check you can just call the employee dot equals and hash code to just check the field okay that's fine let's let's validate these things now now let me run this are you able to see the value 1 not 1 is nothing our getter method call then setter method i modify the object department to it and then i'm printing the two string in two string i am printing the entire employee object and i can see the updated value with the two string the way we have defined now again if you want to customize something on the generated method then also you can do that for example in two string i don't want to print the id so what you can do you can simply go to your lombok define annotation just define hey lombok while you generating the two string method for my pojo please exclude what field id name department whatever you want let's say department okay then 
I just want to show you how it will be how in compile time it will show the two string method now after modify this so based on that you can get the complete picture find the build is succeeded just go here just open the employee class now if you we'll check the two string method see here we have only id and name department is not part of the two string now because that is what we just mentioned here fine now if i'll run this method again i will not see the department as part of my two string response only i'm seeing id and name fine similarly if you want to customize something on equals and hash code method just open the particular annotation what you want to exclude as part of equals and hash code method how you want to define the alias of it there are so many attribute you can define as part of each and every annotation to customize the way you need to define that particular method okay you can play with that it looks good right for each and every action or each and every method we are just defining what method we want for this particular pojo since i need five different method i have defined five different annotations but is there any possibility to not define more method or to optimize the annotations i don't want to define getter and setter i want someone do this for me in a single annotation i don't want two string and equals as code i want this getter setter two string equals and hash code can be done by a single annotation is this possible yes lombok is smart enough he provided a another annotation called data using this data annotation it will cover everything when i am saying everything it will cover two string equals and hash code getter and setter method okay but for constructor you must need to define this all are constructor and if you need no argument constructor you need to remember this permutation and combination of placing the lombok annotation fine so if you are adding data it will add the two string equals as code and getter and setter if you are added data you no need to explicitly define two string only you can define two string when you want to customize it okay that's the simple logic you need to understand fine now let me run this let's see whether it it added all the required method or not just open the employee class can you see here it added the getter and setter equals and hash code then two string and default not default a no arc constructor and parameterized constructor now you can access this right already you are able to call the set and get method so you are good now let's discuss another interesting annotation that is builder okay so this builder annotation provide a highly recommended way to build your value object when i am saying value object for example in this employee class i have id name department so i don't want to write the builder design pattern to just append the value to the object rather i can use the annotation at the red builder okay now if i want to build the employee object what i can do still you have option to use the getter and setter since we added the data annotation but what we can do now i can build the employee object something like this employee dot builder dot build now whatever the parameter you have or whatever the attribute you have just define that one by one i want to set the id 102 i also want to set the name something like santosh then i also want to set the department whatever the field we have okay let's say testing just add the dot fine so now it will give you one employee object i mean i am just building a employee object using a builder pattern okay now if you want to print it you can get the result employee one now let me generate the class file again to validate how the builder pattern i mean how the builder annotation create the class structure inside the employee class okay usually it will create one inner class to just map your value object so let's validate it right away 
just go to the employee class can you see here employee builder builder new employee builder it created a inner class called employee builder then it added whatever the field you want to build while creating the object or the value you want to map to the object and it created that particular method by setting the current id current name like based on your attribute okay and also since we added the data we have the getter and setter we have two string no r constructor default constructor everything we have as it is fine this is what the useful of using builder design pattern to map the value to object like this so let's run it okay we'll just see the whether value are getting mapped or not are you seeing the result here this is the employee object we created using the builder 102 santosh testing fine now let's go to the employee class so we have defined the field as a private right this is not the immutable class what i want i want all my attribute what i will define by default it will be private and final okay so similarly the other data i want to use some annotation who will make all my field as a private and final and also i don't want setter method okay so for that what you can do just comment this other data then you can define there is an annotation called other value this annotation similar like data but it will keep your attribute as a private final and it will not generate the setter method okay so you no need to define its private you can remove the private uh, keyword now since we remove the other data annotation here set method will not work just comment it out for now all good right now what i can do let me generate the jar file or i will just compile this class then we will validate how it map the value just open your employee dot class can you see here class is final it cannot be extend forward and then attribute is also final then whatever the annotation you have added for uh, general method it is added here fine so these are what we have discussed as a commonly used annotation of lumbo okay day to day life everyone we are playing with these annotations now it's time to reveal few annotations which are completely unknown for users i mean i'm not saying everyone don't know about it but i can bet few of you not even heard about those annotations of lumbo let me explain one by one okay till this point we are going with a happy scenario we just discuss the basic annotations of lumbo and we understand internally how they work how lumbo added the required methods at compile time okay so we can see the dot class file it's compiled class only right now let's discuss the hidden method of lumbo so let's close this now let's go one by one now let's say i have a class this class right lumbo feature test now let me comment this out okay i don't want to print those value again let it be commented now let me uncomment this now i have a method who will take the byte array as a input and will be converted as a string now do you know why this particular line is crying because it will throw the compile time exception okay so what he is suggesting either you throws it from this method so that who will be the next method caller he will handle it or you just handle it so like this either throws it correct otherwise you just handle it using your try and catch block like this he is suggesting us but i am a developer i don't have much time to deal with such kind of thing so what you can do you can ask to the lumbo hey lumbo do you have any solution for this kind of scenario where i don't want to play with the exception handling give me some annotation i'll write that so that internally you will add try catch or whatever you want to do okay i don't want to manage by myself 
so for that there is a annotation in lumbo that is called sneaky throws now if you added the sneaky throws behind the scene lumbo will add a try catch for you if you don't believe my word let me show you the source code right away not source code our compiled class let me run it build is succeeded just open this particular class lumbo feature test go to the target classes lumbo lumbo feature test let me close this now see here byte array to string method it handle the try and catch i have not write the try and catch block however lumbo did it for me i just define this particular annotation isn't it interesting like this there are many more annotations we'll discuss one by one now let's move to the next annotation that is clean up okay so purpose of using this particular annotation to clean the resource once you used it clean the resource for example you are using file in anything specific to the file right input stream or output stream usually we need to close that using try and catch block if not you can still have the option to close that using the try with resources in java 7 it was introduced right but if you don't want to manually do that stop you can ask lumbo to do on behalf of you using this particular clean up annotation for example i have this particular method right read file method so in this read file method what i am doing we are using the input stream to read the file and then i am using buffer reader to read the file line by line and, and then just printing it okay this is the simple thing now this resource input stream and reader we are not closing it anywhere right it will be memory issue if you will not close it so how can you close it you can simply define the try and finally right you can define the try here then finally and you can define these two reference outside then you can just in finally you can check if the file input stream if it is null if it is not using then close that file input stream dot close right similarly you can check for buffer reader if here this is what the old strategy okay now if you are using java 7 let's remove this code you can use something called try with resources if you are using intellij idea just hover your mouse you can find the uh, option here surround with try with resource block just define the try block and keep the stream which you want to auto close okay this is what also you can do but again if you don't want to do this step manually what you can do you can ask lumbo to do this for you so you can simply define clean up annotation okay so if you will define clean up annotation it should work but why this is crying okay my bad it should not be on top of method it should the on near to the stream okay i want to auto close this particular stream once it is done once it is null i want to close it now i will also test this okay so what i will do i will just create the object of this class fine now first let me show you the compiled class generated by lumbo once you added this particular annotation then we'll understand so let me rerun it now just go to the target and check the class this class right we have the method called read file now here if you see see here reader dot close input stream dot close is just checking the null and just closing it fine so no need to do this step manually if you know these annotations clean up sneaky throw and few more i am going to cover if you know these steps lot of time you can save okay in your development time
Now let's move to the next annotation that is synchronized. So I believe you heard this term synchronized. We usually use this term synchronized to achieve thread safety so that at a time we can guarantee that a single thread can execute the task. So let, let's go with one example. Okay, theory I don't want to explain you. Let's go with the example. Then I will show you the difference of Java synchronized and Lombok synchronized. So let's say I have something called counter. This is the class I have created. Okay. So what I am doing here, I have two synchronized method. One will increment the count value which was initial, initialized as a zero and one will get the count. So I have created two thread, thread one and thread two. Thread one is incrementing and getting the value. Okay. Similarly, this one, the thread one name is worker one. Thread two is also doing the same thing. So two thread parallelly accessing the increment method. Okay. So to achieve thread safety, what I have done here, I have defined the synchronized keyword. This will work, right? Let me run this. We got the result. Thread two execute, then one execute, two, one, we got the result. Here in multi-threading, we cannot predict the order of execution. Okay. So see here, worker two executed, then worker one, worker two, one, two, one, like this. Now if I will run again, the order will be different because this is multi-threading. See here, 2 execute, then 1, 4, then 2, 1, like this. So that is fine. We are using synchronized to achieve the thread safety. We cannot maintain the order of execution. But my goal here to convince, if you don't want to use the synchronized keyword and still you want to achieve the thread safety, what you can do? you can use the Lombok annotation called synchronized. Okay. You can do like this. But what happened once you annotate this? Usually, if you define the synchronized keyword, what we have defined before, it can apply the lock on this is nothing your current object. But if you are using other other rate synchronized, then what Lombok does, it create a object lock. It create a custom object lock. Okay. Based on that, you can apply the lock and you can achieve the thread safety. Fine. So you cannot play with the this keyword if you are using the other rate synchronized annotation of Lombok. Now let's prove it. Okay. So what I will do? I can run this, but let me first show you the code. Go to the target, open the counter class. See here, it applies the synchronized block, okay. And this dot lock, lock is nothing, it created the object. That is what I was trying to convince. Usually, in our code, we can play with synchronized this, but since you are using other synchronized, it created a synchronized block and it applies the lock on the custom object what we created. I mean, what Lombo created for you. Now let's see whether it follow the thread safety or not. Let me run this. Not this class. Go to the counter and just run it. Can you see here? It follow the thread safety. Now if I will run it again. The order could vary. Okay. Don't focus on that. This is what the multi-threading If you want to play with the order, just try with the wait and notify. That is how you can communicate with the thread. But we are getting the confirmation that okay, using this other thread synchronized annotation, Lombok create the custom object to apply the lock instead of this and we are achieving the thread safety. So it's simple, right? You can still play with this synchronized annotation to achieve thread safety. Now let's move to the next annotation, which I believe everyone is using it in their day to day life. I use it uh, quite frequently. So let's say I have some class. Okay, this class. So here what I want to do, I want to add some log statement. So you can add the log dependency, then you create the logger factory logger 
get logger instance like that you can write that syntax okay what is that logger logger equal to logger factory dot get logger of the class name that you can define right then you can write log dot info you can define the label based on your need but what i want i don't want to create the logger instance rather i want to take the help from lumbo so i can simply use a annotation called sl4j so directly adding this annotation will not work if you don't have the logging dependency in your pom.xml so just add this dependency i mean if you are using spring boot you no need to explicitly define this dependency since this is the java project i have just added this dependency okay now you have added this sl4j now here i can define for example log dot info read file started something like that and i can define all the label okay i can define log dot debug i can also define log dot error this is not the recommended place to add but since this is the demo i am just showing that using this other sl 4j you can able to access all the log label debug error info warn everything okay now did i create anywhere that logger factory get logger instance no right this lumbo will give me the logger instance to prove that i can show you the compiled class let's run it just go to the target what is this class name lombok feature right just go to the target can you see here did i add this statement no right lombok did it for me on top of which class you annotated at the red sl4j you will create the logger instance for that and whatever the log statement we have added it's same right now if you will run this class can you see here read file started debug log some error also see here com.lombok.feature debug and label also getting printed correctly fine this is also another interesting annotation to use in your application now let's move to the next annotation that is delegate okay so delegate annotation is used to delegate the method of an object to another object okay if you are using delegate then lumbo automatically generate the necessary code to forward the method call for example i have a class called task handler now i have this method do some task now same method i want to access from some other class for example let's say i have a cl class called worker from this worker if i want to access this task handler what i can do simply i can do something like this right public the first step what i can do i can just extend from that class task handler then i can override the do something method provide your logic or just call the super method then from your your worker class just define the main method and create the object of worker or you can define what is the parent task handler right task handler handler polymorphism right this is what the polymorphism you can define that uh, you can define like this but let's go with the simple one let me create the child class object and i can access something like worker dot do some task now when i call this method it will call the current class method and from the current class method we do the super method call which is nothing your this logic now if i run this i should get the result performing task but what i am doing here i am taking the headdock of overriding the method and calling the super method again rather than what i want this particular method do some task method i want to delegate directly to this worker class that simple how can i do that 
using at the rate delegate annotation of lombo how you can do that just define the attribute i mean like the dependency injection the way we do in the spring handler just use at the rate delegate now what you can do once you define this the do something method from the task handler will be available in this child class not child remove this this is not required will be available in the current class where you have delegating your task handler methods now i can simply able to access it right worker dot do some task can you see here did i specify do some task in worker class no if no then how can i able to access that particular method with worker class object because of this delegate annotation in simple word what this delegate does it simply delegate the method to the class where you have defined this particular annotation if i if i have five method i can able to access from here because i completely delegate that class i completely delegate that object okay that is what another advantages of using at the rate delegate annotation now let's move to the next annotation so there is a interesting annotation called super builder okay so what this annotation does it is used to implement the builder pattern for classes that have inherited for example in employee class we have defined the builder right now i can only set the value of this employee class what if if this employee class extends from some other class can i set the parent property in the child no but as per the oops principle child can access the parent property but if you are using builder annotation we cannot set that value so lombok just enhance that part and provide another annotation called super builder okay so let me give you an example just i have created a class called vehicle and it have two attribute make and model similarly i have another class called car that extends from vehicle and having a single field now vehicle is the parent class car is the child class of vehicle now if i want to from the car class if i want to set the value of vehicle that i can achieve using the super builder but if you will use the builder annotation it will not work in the inheritance concept so how you can define that i will just define annotation super builder then also you need to define the getter annotation similarly just copy paste this and just add here fine now just create a main method to just access the attribute from child to parent when i am saying access you can set and get that is what what i am trying to convince so let's say let me create the object of car equal to car dot builder dot build now just set the value whose object i created child class now let me do something like this dot can i see the value i mean can i see the attribute make and model dot model just here at dot sit count so just give some random value okay so let's say model is honda make is honda right model you can define something like city sit count let's say capacity is 5 now i created the object of child class but still i am able to set the attribute for parent class so this you can achieve using the super builder so let's prove that let me just add some sys out now i'll just run this then we'll check the compiled class how lombok added this feature okay or what he does when we added the super builder annotation just run this are you able to see the value great so this is what you can play using the super builder annotation now next let's move into another annotation so that is something specific to the utility let me tell you so let's say i have a date util class okay i am again opening the compiled class close all the tab go to the 
day duty now in this particular day util i just want to want to take the date object and want to format in a string with the pattern i defined simple logic we do write n number of util class in our project right just consider this is one of them some date util or date parse um, util class now what i want i want to access this particular method how can i access since this is the static i can call directly using the class name so let me access it i can able to access using the directly class name and method name so let me run it we are able to get the time stamp i mean the pattern i have specified now what i want rather than i define it as a static i want to tell to the lombo hey just do one thing i am using annotation utility class then i should able to access this particular method as a utility method so i don't want to define static and all behind the scene you do how can i able to access it outside with the class name now i'm not getting any error right so here if you observe it's not static it's a instance method if i want to access this particular format method now at this situation in the other class i need to create the object of date utils then i can call the dot format method but once i added this particular annotation utility class i am able to access it using the class now let's run this and we'll validate whether we are getting the result or not then i'll show you the compiled class generated by lombo i can able to get the result that's great now let me regenerate the jar file go to the target just open the date util class see here who added the static keyword for me final class it cannot be extend and also it added the static and also it added a default constructor with the unsupported operation exception some meaningful messages i mean if someone wants to instantiate this class it will just say that okay this is final it class cannot be instantiated fine that is the reason we are able to access even though it is a instance because behind the scene lombok added the static key keyword on behalf of you all good now let me take you to another interesting lombok annotation that is extension method okay so if you read the annotation extension method the name itself saying that what is the role of that particular annotation for example you have a class with some logic i want to modify that logic without touching your code how can i do that that is where this extension method annotation will help you for example let's say i have this class string extension and if you see the logic here there is no rocket science i am just reverse a string i am just doing reversing a string using the string builder i want to little bit modify this code but i don't want to touch this particular class let this class because this class being used by multiple other classes okay so it might be in a production so i don't want to create a mess rather what i want i want to modify this but without touching this particular class how can i do that so let's say i have created this string enhancer class and what i am doing here i am just calling your class method and giving the input then here i do need to write my own logic behind the scene i am using your class method only but writing my own custom logic to override the behavior or to add a enhancement but what i can do here what i am doing here i am just using your class name to call the method now what i want to do i don't want to define the class name from where i am able to access it i want to give just the input what i want to pass to the method so you need to tell to the lombok okay this particular method i have defined on top of this particular method i just want to extend the logic of this particular method in this class so just tell him using 
this annotation extension method of class string what is the class name string ex, string extension right just give the input my bad i placed in the wrong place it should be on top of class i am saying this is the enhanced class of this particular string extension dot class where i am using that particular method and extending the behavior of the input dot is palindrome this class okay string extension see that is the reason I, to not confuse i have defined the name this is the string extension class which is the old class and this is the enhancer class who is using the method of string extension and modifying it without touching their code i have write my own logic to check the palindrome behind the scene i am calling that method but with the input okay by 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 writing my own enhancement of that code okay so this is how you can also use the extension method so these are all few hidden methods of lombo few of you might be aware about it few of might be not but don't worry since i have covered here to summarize this what we have discussed because we have discussed more than 10 or 12 annotation right it's really difficult to remember to summarize that let's brush up once again we have understand about the commonly used annotation getter and setter all argument constructor no argument constructor to string equals and hash code method at the rate data at the rate builder at the rate value these are the common annotations we have discussed okay which we frequently used in our day to day life but there are some hidden annotation which we just discuss sneaky throws to just handle with the exception to just deal with the exception clean up to just close the resource synchronized to achieve thread safety at the rate sl4j for logging purpose at the rate delegate to just delegate the method from one object to another object at the rate super builder we just used to map the or just map the value object of child and parent utility class to just define the class as a utility so that you no need to explicitly define the method as a static okay and by default lombo will make that class final and last we discuss about the extension method to modify the method without touching the code without touching the existing code okay so we have created string extension string enhancer we modify the string extension related method in enhancer class without touching the string extension class and its method okay and there are few more like at the rate val at the rate with and at the rate tolerate and again there are few more two three annotation so do let me know in a comment section if you find this tutorial helpful and if you want more annotation about the lombo then i'll plan for the next session about the lombo okay this is what all about the lombo i have covered begin from what is lombo how to install the lombo and i almost cover all the possible annotation of lombo except two or three which is pending okay so just go through these annotations try to implement it and definitely it will save your time in your day to day life and there are also a controversy which i saw some blog that this lombo annotation will not be recommended in production environment which is completely wrong there are so many pros and cons so those who are not those who are saying that it's not recommended in the production it's because we are relying on another third party dependency that is lombo okay so it might be risk for your application if it is something more secure app right but other than that i don't find any difficulty of using this lombo annotation in production we do use in our project i mean not only my project i saw maximum project are being using this particular lombo annotation okay that separate part just do let me know in a comment section if you guys have any doubts or if you want me to cover few more annotations that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept